We're here in Jackson, Tennessee at Dutch Garden Berries. And you may be thinking, oh, I don't know, strawberries may have taken a hit. Or I don't know if we're gonna have any berries this spring. Well, no worries here because we've got a half an acre of strawberries under glass. Boss Van Buren is the owner of Dutch Garden Berries, and boy, this is a sight for sore eyes. We were worried about berries, but you've got them. Yes, ma'am. You've got half an acre, and what's the kind of berries that you're growing here? We're growing day neutral varieties. Most of them have been developed by UC Davis in California, and we're trying out several different varieties right now to see what suits us best and what the consumers actually prefer. The system was originally developed in Northern Europe, in Belgium and the Netherlands in particular. Labor up there is, uh, is scarce and it's also very expensive and if, it's, uh, it, if it can be done more um, worker friendly, it has to be done that way. Otherwise people just won't do it. Right. So this here is actually made to, to gradually walk by the aisles and pick them and uh, you know, it should be fairly easy to do and fairly enjoyable. Well, absolutely. You don't have to worry about heat. You don't have to worry about bugs. You don't have to worry about cold. Right. So you've got the perfect setup here. So when you got this idea, how did you decide that, okay, it's going to be strawberries? I have several friends of mine in the Netherlands and one friend of mine in particular in Belgium that has done this for many, many years. And I was looking for a crop that would be financially feasible uh, in a small greenhouse because even though this looks large from a greenhouse standpoint, it still is fairly small. And strawberries really is one of the only uh, crops that you can grow and come out ahead on financially. Exactly. And that's also one that I enjoy, I have to be honest with you. <laughs> so yeah, you know, everybody kind of comes out of their winter slumber and they're ready for something nice and fresh. And so strawberries are, are always a, a hit for that. Right. How many plants in this greenhouse? 17,400. That might take care of my needs for strawberries for today. I believe it will. <laughs> <laughs> So yours are all going to be pre-picked and you're going to sell them right out of your greenhouse facility, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you for telling me you don't have any pest. No, ma'am. And I'm sure part of it is because this is our first year. So we didn't really have any pest, uh, you know, built up. It's part of it. The other thing is we're trying to make everything as perfect as possible for our plants. We've got these pipes here. This is actually radiant heat. So you can feel this pipe, it's warm because it's cold outside yes. right now. So what we're trying to do is bring heat underneath the plants and start evaporation early on. These pipes will warm up at about 4.30 in the morning. So on days that the sun does come out, unlike today, <laughs> this plant is already ready to evaporate. So when the sun comes out, boom, it's ready to go. The roots are already working. Also what it does, it brings your humidity out. So you know, all your humidity that could potentially be harmful for fungal diseases, or, you know, it gets those out and it creates a happy plant. And so how do you water these? Because I see your little system yes, here. Yes, we have, have drippers. We have two per bag and we have uh, three per bag on the south side because they get more sun and they're going to need more water. Um, this system was all designed in the Netherlands and in Belgium and it's called a substrate system. There still is soil in these bags, but it's a peat mix. The, the mix actually has very little or no nutrients in it, and we add the nutrients with this machine here. I see. This is our B tub. That is our A tub. Um, when you have, the reason we got two different tubs is when you take a, a fertilizer that contains calcium, and you take one that contains sulfur, if you combine them together, they settle, they create sheetrock, pretty much. So we gotta separate those when they're in high concentrations. Once they go into the substrate uh, machine, it mixes them, as you can tell yes, here. Yes, yes. Then they are in such small quantities, it doesn't really matter anymore and they don't settle out. There's a lot of research that's been done on what the plant needs precisely, and that's what we're giving it. We have three different mixes. We have a mix that we put in when we first plant the plant, then we have a bloom mix, and then we have a harvest mix. 
So obviously now we're in harvest and bloom. Yeah. So that's the, one of the reasons why that if you would just plant these without those nutrients, you're not going to have this. I mean, no. it's not got anything to feed it. Right. The plant's just kind of sitting there. It would be, uh, in, in essence, I guess, shut down. Yeah, and then we have uh, bumblebees to pollinate. Another feature that we have is you see how these flower trusses are long? Yes. What we want is we want these flower trusses to hang out up here. So we actually get the fruit hanging here for several reasons. One, it's much easier to harvest. They ripen much more evenly, but also they never stay moist that way. So they dry out, less fungal diseases. Got it. This here, these bags, I will lift one up, have drain holes in them. Oh, I see that. I was wondering how that would drain out of there. I see. And what it does, you can see the little white tips here from the roots. What it does, it air prunes the roots because there's air underneath here. It also catches the drain water that comes out of these bags and it can be recycled. Wonderful. So it all runs to the end. That's why up here, the gutters are slightly higher than they are in the back because they all had to slope that way. So did you hand plant each one of these, just cut a hole in the bag and hand plant they it? Actually, when we order the bags, they'll ask you, where do you want the holes and how many holes do you want? So they will custom do it for you. Okay, so like next year, will you discard these or, and start all over? Yes, ma'am, we will. So, so this is a one year? Yeah, this year we started in January. Um, we will grow these hopefully until the middle to the end of June, depending on the heat. Right. Once it gets consistently above 85, 90 degrees, these uh, berries start producing, I mean, stop producing flour, so then there won't be any berries. Right. Um, when that happens, we'll cut the water off, we'll let them shrivel up, then we just kinda take a stick, knock off the foliage, then we'll take a knife, we cut out the, the soil and uh, reuse the soil, for, for horticulture or agriculture, or just whatever we want to do, we'll probably compost it. And then uh, dispose of the bags. Then we'll plant again. We're hoping somewhere around September the 15th, depending, depending on the heat. And then grow all the way through Christmas. Then we'll give them a break for about four to six weeks. Um, we're gonna have to see how long that's gonna have to be. All this is you know, trial and error. Right. Then we should have berries again in you know early March, and we'll do that crop, and then we'll start the cycle again in the fall. So the whole purpose of this greenhouse is exactly what we as consumers crave. It's going to give us wonderful, delicious, juicy, local fruit, local berries, in all times of the year except for the dog days of summer. So we can extend our strawberry season and enjoy local fruit, for months rather than weeks. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.